Hey everybody, it's me Margaret and I have had a very productive week. But it hasn't been really yarn productive. And I guess we could say that the theme of this week has been kitchen related. <laughs> Everything I've been doing seems to be related to something in the kitchen. And that includes dishcloths. Now I made these from, it's a crochet pattern and it's called dishcloth. <laughs> I will link to this in the uh, description box below. It's, you know, I was I was doing those knitted knitted ones, and I was trying to make the pretty patterns and all, and really got kind of disgusted because I, I just couldn't make them come out right. So I thought, good old crochet, it makes me happy. So I pulled the crochet hook out and found this, and I love the way that it's got the scrubbies on the bottom. And then it's big up here. And actually, I am using these myself. I was going to give this and this white one to my sister-in-law, but I have never really given away my stuff as gifts, per se, um, since my friends and family don't seem to appreciate it very much. So I'm a little sheepish about that. No pun intended. But um, regardless, I used this yarn, which is what I made some pot holders out of, and I made for myself, and I made these, and one of them is actually in the wash now because I put it to good use. As you will see, I easily needed it um, with everything that I had going on this week. So why is everything crazy and I haven't had as much yarn time? Because we're in the middle of the holidays. This is, well, no, we're not, we're at the beginning of the holidays, really and truly. Halloween's kind of minimal for me, but Thanksgiving is usually huge. And uh, this year it's, um, it's extra special for me. Number one, I'm not hosting, which is very nice. My sister-in-law is gonna have that. And also not one, not two, but all three of my children will be home for the entire week. And so I'm really excited about that. Well, with that comes a lot of cooking. <laughs> One, because I like some of their favorite foods. Um, two, because it's uh, kind of expensive to take five people out to eat all the time. And um, three, we just have to eat. I don't know, how many reasons do you need? But anyhow, because of that, I have been trying to get a jump start on my cooking, uh, which is something I absolutely hate to spend time cooking in the kitchen. I don't like it. I'm sorry. There is not one thing I like about it. So the other day I woke up in a very energetic mood and I was off early to the grocery store. It is Tuesday morning and it is windy. Can you see all the trees blowing. We're about to have this massive storm and I knew that so I got up early this morning. I was at the grocery store. I left the house at 6 30 excuse me to go to the grocery store <laughs> because I have to do a lot of bulk cooking today and as a matter of fact I started doing some cooking and took some video for you as well and you know what it's only nine o'clock in the morning. I am expecting some appraisers to come here uh, around 10 30 so I'm kind of stuck here for the morning another reason why I got up early and went to the grocery store so uh, that's what I've got going on today so what was I cooking <laughs> well I'm just trying to get a head start so I did things in bulk uh, that would actually knock out a few steps down the line for when I get ready to actually make the dish and I thought you know I wonder if other people do the same thing. I'm going to throw this little, because it helps me a whole lot. And as a matter of fact, when I had all the kids home, there were times when I really would do this a lot and keep it in the freezer because it just made meal prep quicker on a regular basis. So I haven't done it in a long time just because I haven't had all five of us home on a regular basis in such a long time. So anyhow, here, here, let me hush up. Here's some tips. Key to remember is fresh is best, but frozen is next best. I need cooking to be easier so we won't head out to a restaurant. So I'll concede to freezing. Squish as much air out of the bag as you can, which is more important the longer it is to remain frozen, by the way. Save time when thawing by freezing your bags in a thin, flat layer rather than a big, solid hunk. 
Rice is a great thing to cook in bulk because it freezes so well. And here I'm using Whole Foods brand of imported organic brown rice. I'm not going to get into the arsenic debate or even the big rice debate, which we could talk about. If you haven't heard about all that, um, Google is your friend. But let's go on to the recipe. You start with one and a half cups of brown rice. If you want to cook white rice in the oven, you have to follow different directions. Then you add a teaspoon of salt a tablespoon of olive oil, and two and one-third cups of boiling water. You give it a stir and cover tightly. And again, there's the aluminum foil debate too, but we'll have save all that for another day. Then you want to bake at 375 degrees for one hour. Note that I'm using a convection oven, which automatically drops the temperature down to 350. After the hour, you take it out, you remove the foil, you fluff with a fork and eat right away. Or, as in my case, I'm going to let it cool, put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. Here I'm preparing meat ahead of time for a soup. And I'm going to use my all-time favorite time-saving kitchen accoutrement, the pressure cooker. I salt and pepper some top round steak and brown it in some olive oil right in the pressure cooker. Then I repeat with all the meat I've got and removing it to a plate with each batch. And remember, fresh is best, but frozen is next best. So I add some chopped onion and garlic to the drippings and cook until soft. You add about a cup of water and then you return the meat to the pot, put the lid on tight, and turn the heat up to high. Once the top is attached and the rocker on the top begins to rock, turn your heat down to medium high and set your timer for about 20 minutes. When it cools down, you get this wonderfully tender meat. <laughs> I kept fogging up the camera. And its own stock that's out of this world. I shred it up and then when it's cool, put it in a Ziploc storage bag. Browning ground meat is another great do-ahead task. We eat half ground beef, half turkey. I use an old electric skillet that I have because it's so big I can easily brown four pounds at a time. Think how quick it'll be to throw together some spaghetti or chili in the crock pot now that this is done. Since I freeze it thin and flat, I can break it up while it's still in the bag and dump it in the crock pot. Boom! It's done. And another thing that's been keeping me busy this week is running errands. That's just part of life, isn't it? So while I've been out and about in different stores, uh, of course, yarn is always on the brain. And so here's some things that uh, just uh, I randomly came across and thought I'd share with you. Look at these cute ornaments. They're needed. So I'm in Walmart and look at this. I have a palm like this. I think it's kind of cool. This is Faded Glory and it's $5.97. Definitely acrylic. I like it. They have a matching scarf. It looks like that weave on this side, but not so great on the back side. And then they have the matching gloves, which are the flip tops. I'm in Walmart and I absolutely have no need to be down this aisle, but look what I just found. A four-in-one crochet tool. <laughs> like a jackknife. Everything the internet didn't teach you about crochet. Huh. I'm assuming they don't know about YouTube. Now, back on Sunday is when I began this cooking ahead of time commotion. And I was going to cook a lot of breakfasts all at one time that day, but as it turned out, I didn't have enough eggs for all the recipes that I need. So I just did coconut muffins. No, I messed up. It's gluten-free blueberry muffins made with coconut flour. If you haven't had that, it's kind of like a sponge cake and it's absolutely delicious and good for you. And so I thought, you know, I'll make a video of this and share it. Now here's the whole concept of this. I'm not a cook. <laughs> I can cook some good things and the success is great, but I cheat. I am a cheater cook. 
Hey everybody, it's me Margaret, and do you hate cooking? Because I hate cooking. But I've got all three of my kids coming in for Thanksgiving for a whole week, and so I'm trying to think ahead. What can I have for breakfast that is quick and easy, ready for them, everybody gets up at different times. I don't want to be standing here in the kitchen cooking to please everybody. Another problem is that my youngest does not eat very well at all at his school. Um, we eat a lot of gluten-free, we eat, we try to lay, uh, live more towards the paleo style of, of cooking, and I have this wonderful website called Elena's Pantry that I discovered. She's also got books, and she's on magazine covers, and she, wonderful things. And so there is a blueberry muffin recipe that we use uh, on a regular basis, but she's a real cook. I am not. So I take shortcuts and I'm going to show you ways to modify a recipe and have it still work. The, the cheater's guide to cooking. Now one of my major tips is to cook in bulk if you can. If you're going to make a mess, go ahead and set aside the time to make one mess one time so there's one cleanup. And that's what I'm doing now. I already have one batch of muffins in the oven. And so now with my mess still out, I'm going to do another batch. Now I have learned that when you try to bake, you can't take a shortcut all the time and just double the ingredients. Baking is much more of a science, and so it usually has to be done exactly as the recipe is written. In this case, I'm cheating, but even still, I did not do double batches. So now I'm about to make my second individual batch, and that's why everything looks all dirty and messy, is because I've already been through this once. One mess, clean up one time. So the first part of the recipe tells us to put all the dry ingredients in here, and that's what I'm going to do. But the dry ingredients are a half cup of coconut flour. Now it says sifted, and oftentimes I would encourage you to sift. But that is also one step that you can avoid. But a real baker would never avoid that step. The second thing we need is a half teaspoon of Celtic sea salt. I don't have any, so I'm using kosher salt. I like to put it in here because if you try to pour it from the container, you'll make a big mess. And then it also calls for a half teaspoon of baking soda. I buy baking soda in the big giant containers because I use it for cleaning and stuff. So in my kitchen, I always keep it in this little jar, a separate part. And then you're supposed to mix your dry ingredients. I always wonder if this is actually necessary because things are really going to be all mixed up when you put it in with the wet ingredients. But Okay, I'll, I'll do this. And here you can see all my wet ingredients that I have out here. But do you see that right there? That's a paper plate and I put all my junk on the paper plate after I finish using it because I, it saves for cleanup. Now in the recipe it says to put six large eggs in your separate bowl and you're going to mix it with a hand blender. Well, why do you want to mix it with a hand blender if you've got a real blender? The real blender also has a pouring spout. And the real blender is also easier to wash. Okay, the next ingredient is a half a cup of honey or agave nectar. I'm using agave in the raw. We need a, did I say half cup? I'm wrong. It's a third cup. Now there is another trick. If you put your oil in first, supposedly your sticky stuff like agave or honey will come out easier. You'll get all of it. But I use one of these little spatulas like this. Love it. And so it's much faster than sitting there waiting on it to all drop out. Then we're going to move to the next thing which is one third cup palm shortening or grapeseed oil. I've got grapeseed oil here. It's just a lighter oil. I have to get some more. And a good cheater cook never frets. If you run out of one oil, just add another one. It's just a little bit. Yes, it's olive oil, but it's not going to be enough to make a difference. So, Cheater cooks never fret. 
because cheater cooks are never prepared. Okay, and then we need a tablespoon of vanilla extract. I use pure vanilla extract, and I just guessed that. Okay, then we need to mix it all up. Now it says, remember to put your top on. Now it says to go ahead and mix these ingredients. And then you need to add your blueberries. Okay, here's another important thing to remember if you are a shortcut cheater cook. You're gonna make mistakes, and I just did that. I put my blueberries in before I put in my dry ingredients. That's crazy, but instead of throwing the ingredients out like a real chef would do, I said, hmm, I wonder what would happen. So I dumped my dry ingredients in as they were supposed to be. I hit the button and I chopped all the blueberries up in there. And now we have blueberry, blueberry flavored batter instead of batter with blueberries in it. Is this gonna be a total disaster? I don't know. Let's bake it, I'll taste it, and I'll let you know. Ooh, here's the first batch. They're looking good. Put them over there. Now, let's put the purple creations in. Okay, just so we're clear, this is what they're supposed to look like. And I did do a taste test and they came out great. And this is what you get when you chop up all your blueberries. <laughs> so, oh and by the way, they will stick to the paper. That's completely normal. It happens a lot without um, and you don't use regular flour, even if you were to grease the sides, it just doesn't seem to work. Ooh, it's still hot. Can you see the steam? Tastes pretty much the same. <laughs> That's kind of a letdown. I was expecting to say, ooh, gross, or ooh, it's better, or <laughs> it's pretty much the same. So there you go. The cheater's cook. Works out every time. <laughs> now, we did have that storm that I had mentioned in an earlier clip. And I thought it would be kind of fun to do a time lapse of the clouds as the storm was coming in. Now, we've all seen this a hundred times on National Geographic Channel and stuff like that, but it's kind of neat to see it in my own backyard. So I'm going to share it with you. <laughs> Wasn't that cool? I don't know what it is about it, but I just, I can't take my eyes away from it while it's on. It's just, I mean, I've watched it probably about seven times. <laughs> I can't stop. But anyhow, um, the storm was really bad last night. We had some tornado warnings and whatnot, but we're fine. Remarkably, we didn't have a whole lot of branches down. Um, actually, under this table, I noticed that we did have a random branch uh, that just kind of blew up. But for the most part, we really lucked out. Steve Munch 2007 has done the Betamax tutorial for the Addy, and I'll put a link in the description box uh, and the little eye that pops up in the corner. And uh, I guess that's all. See you next week. Bye.